the truth. Welcome back, guys, to the Binging with Babelish podcast. Uh, I'm Abdul. And I'm Ashwath, back again with another episode, episode 18 to be exact. Uh, you no, know, this episode 19. is going. 18 it... or 19? It might be sure, yeah, 19. 19. Episode 19. Well, yeah. we've done so much that now we confuse them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how's it going, Ashwath? How's it your summer? Going good. Summer, just relaxing, you know, just the point yeah. of summer, really, from a break from school. But. You know, this episode is going out a bit later than our usual dates, but it'll still be up there. Should be up here uh, on Friday. You should be watching watching this. So, yeah, yeah we can get into the episode. Uh, first off, and start stop, with... stop, stop, stop. Go click subscribe. Oh, go yeah. like right now. And leave a comment of uh, what you'd like us to do uh, to improve. Yeah. And, and let's go, Ashwa. Ring those yeah. ring those notification bells and you know, mm-hmm. just press out all of that. Press all of that. Yeah, all of but it, all of it. Start off with the yay or nays. Uh I got I got five prepared. So first one, Harry Potter, yay or nay. Harry Potter? Uh Okay. I'm gonna come out and say I've never read a Harry Potter book or watched a Harry Potter movie. I'm gonna go out and say I'm I'm <laughs> I'm sorry to the Harry Potter community. Uh, I failed you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't seen one of them. And, like, everybody seems to love them. I've got to get and watch one. Yeah, what I'm about you? I, mm-hmm. you? I think you know. I, I am a very big Harry Potter fan. Read all the books, watch all the movies, take in all the... I consume all the content. There's even plays I know. Is that I, I, I have the. I never watch it, but I have the. I have the script for it. I've read that, mm-hmm. and it's just like reading a book. But it's definitely a yay for me. I guess for you, it's not really a nay, but it's not a yay because you haven't really seen any. Of yeah, that. Harry Potter. They have very good movies out here. Like uh, them throughout. How many years were they filming the same three guys or three? guys and like the main three character yeah i mean a lot of the actors you know stayed throughout there was only one major character change after mm-hmm. the first two movies dumbledore you know the old white guy yeah the yeah he got replaced from the third movie onward but other than that the main cast uh you know stuck together so that was cool how many movies are there uh eight. for the eight. eight throughout how long do you know how long like when uh, they started? since like 2001 till 2011 or 2013 something like that wow 11 years i saw like they start as kids and then they mature through the movie yeah. them and the movie and uh, now the story is about what Oshawa, do you know what the story is about oh, yeah, i mean you of course know it a lot of people even if you haven't read it you just know it's about magic as well the boy's parents died from an evil wizard and you know <laughs> wizards <laughs> <laughs> and then he has his journey through his magical school where he faces challenges obstacles mm-hmm. and a lot of them are caused because of this evil wizard and eventually faces him in battle and who knows what happened now like everyone knows this always ends with the hero defeating the villain but yeah yeah there's a saying in arabic that says like and then it's like the hero never dies or something like that i, don't know. Something I mean they may else. die but the hero never loses never loses but it has like double meaning when you switch it and yeah like the guy is like uh, i was a kamikaze fighter in uh what is it in the world war Two, and then he was like how didn't how are you not dead he's like the hero never dies <laughs> that's a good saying All yes right. next one yeah so for you it's a it's, yay yeah. me i really have no opinion yeah uh netflix yeah or nay Netflix. Now, this is a huge yay, I would say, because, like, everything's on there. Like, not everything, but there's a lot of, to choose from, and for the whole family. Yeah, for me, it's a definitely a yay. I've, even, the, like, there's so many Netflix originals that I l- love watching. May, I mainly watch Netflix for the TV shows, not so much the movies, but even then, there's a couple of Netflix original movies that I really like here and there, but... Yeah, especially the teen shows on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I know some of them are controversial, but I like a lot of them, and that's what I like mainly watch on Netflix. So yeah, it's definitely yay for me. Just a lot of content to consume again. Yeah. Netflix also like revives shows. I like there's a couple. There's a show in particular, Lucifer. It was just gonna end at season three or two, and then Netflix took it upon themselves and made four and five. And then it was just going to end. And then the media support, and then they bought it. They revived shows. Like, 
There's another yeah, same, one designated they say the same Survivor. Thing. Co- Cobra Kai, it was had two seasons on YouTube, but it, then it fell apart. They they stopped production, but then mm-hmm. Netflix, you know, took it in and revived it. Season three came out. Now yeah. it's as alive as ever and one of Netflix's most popular shows. Yeah, Netflix is uh, expanding into the Middle East now, into areas they've never been before where they don't speak English. Like in France, they have their own Netflix. In Turkey, they have their own Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Ne- India, they have on Netflix. Canada. So, Netflix. yeah, they've taken the global market with, like, grasp on there. And really, my the best shows on Netflix are usually Netflix shows, to be honest. Like, they sometimes have those, like, seasonal... For right, right now, there's a show. show called Manifest that's been on trending for a while. Well, I watched the first episode today. Nice. <laughs> How was it? It was, like... I don't know, I expected every move that happened, like, really, because, like, I've seen too many shows where, like, you start thinking in your head in advance, and then it just happens. <laughs> it was nice, like, the idea is pretty cool. So we're going to move on to another year and a, uh, first-person shooter games, or even if you, like, you can include any shooter game, yay or nay? Yay or nay? Uh, probably yay, because, like, depends, like, there's always the bad one, and then there's always the good one, so... Over here, you can't really say yay or nay, but like in general, the idea it's 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 all right. It's pretty cool. You're like you're the character himself. You're not controlling someone. You feel like you're the guy. You get what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, because it's also it's not a story based. You just most mm-hmm. of them you're going around just trying to kill the other players in the lobby, and yeah, you try to get that win or the most kills in the lobby. But what's your favorite if you have one? Uh, first player game. I would have to go with Call of Duty. I haven't played much. That's the thing. So, either Call of Duty or Shell Shockers. Shell, what is <laughs> if Shell? If you know Shockers? that game, no. it's a, it's just a Chrome based game where you're egg and then you shoot people first. <laughs> and then there's eggs okay. too. Yeah, it's 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 a joke of a game, but it was fun throughout uh, middle school. But yeah, I would say Call of Duty. Uh, I really liked uh, playing. Before I think I forgot the names, and then the brand new one, the multiplayer, not the Cold War, the one before the Warzone one. Yeah, what about you? For me, it has to be Valorant, is what I'm before that. It's Fortnite, it's not first person shooter, but it's still a shooter game, and that, that was definitely the thing I was grinding. But now it's Valorant, this is pretty much the only game I play. Usually, I never play multiple games at once, it's usually just I focus on one thing and try to grind that out. But yeah, like that's what I'm playing right now. It's just it's kind of like Counter Strike for those Counter Strike fans, but with abilities. So like those Overwatch fans, it's like a combination of Overwatch and Counter Strike with abilities, and just from Overwatch and the mechanics from Counter Strike. But it's a really cool game, up and coming. Only been out for like a year, uh, but maybe a bit over a year. But it, you know the everything about it is improving as it goes, and it's looking positive. So that's it's a that's a good game. But yeah, for me overall. I don't even know. Shooter games, I never used to like them when I was younger. Like, I always thought that was boring. Like, I mainly played story mode games because I was always, I always liked to enjoy to just to see the story. Not even just yeah. like, to play the video game, just to see the story of, like, oh, the guys I like. But mm-hmm. now I definitely say, like, a yay because I play them now. But for, yeah. like, games like Call of Duty or, like, Apex Legends or, like, any popular shooting game right now, I've never really been interested in them, so... Nay and yeah. nay for those, but you had. Yeah. I, I'm surprised. Like you found a way to include Valorant, your favorite game, right now to mm-hmm. put it in the podcast. That's crazy. And like uh, you're talking first person games, like Apex Legend, that died really quick. I mean, I wouldn't say that. It's still pretty alive, especially. Is, is it still? Team. Yeah. It, oh. Obviously, it, the their peak, they reached their peak really quickly, and then they yeah kind of fell off. But it's still like it's I still think definitely Microsoft popular. backs it. And yeah, for me, Fortnite was the game. Was the game. Was the game. Yeah, so, yeah, the biggest game in the world. Yeah, and yeah, it's the yay for me. All right, next year, nay, we got um, <clears throat> cinnamon flavored foods. Cinnamon flavored foods. Cinnamon roll, yay. Uh, cinnamon tea, not so much, but it's I don't all right. Like cinnamon tea. <laughs> Yeah, I just put like a stick of you know thing of cinnamon in the tea while it's bo- either while it's boiling or after it boils, and then you drink. Yeah, overall, yay. But like you, 
if you have too much, you'll get tired of the taste. Yeah, I, and that's a, a lot of things, and it's, I think especially for a thing like cinnamon. But like yeah. you, know, cinnamon roll, it's it's a yay for me because cinnamon roll is one of my favorite desserts. You know, just always yeah. something to indulge in every once in a while. Cinnamon tea never really had it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think on the top of my head, I don't really remember like cinnamon specific foods I've had. But like yeah. cinnamon, I always like adding that flavor to like any like kind of dessert. Like even if it's not like the main ingredients, I mean, mm. it adds like a sprinkle jump. Sprinkle cinnamon, yeah, yeah. cinnamon on top. Yeah, it yeah. just adds I like said, a sweet jump. Yeah. Because what what would it. you have with your uh, cinnamon roll, like as a drink or a, a side? Drink? Nothing. It's on. It ha for me, the cinnamon roll has that frosting. It's still good that frosting, but for me, like as long as it has the you know the icing glaze, the, yeah, else, icing. So, that glaze, yeah. Yeah, I would. No, I drink. I have to lubricate it down because <laughs> I don't know. So I just have milk with it, and then yeah, that's really milk it. and bread. With, with yeah, me. that's a common milk. thing. Yeah, so it's for me. It's cinnamon zye. It's it's like seasonal too, like around Christmas. I would say, like um, cinnamon, or does it? I there's a seasonal. Really. Isn't it a seasonal thing? Like around <laughs> that time, it, there's more cinnamon stuff around. I wouldn't say that. I don't think really, so. Maybe a little bit, but not not like how pumpkin for Thanksgiving. No, no, no not compared to pumpkin at Thanksgiving. But, but even then, there I, is, I don't. Uh, maybe when maybe I think about cinnamon, I think about Christmas for some odd reason. I mean, maybe it's because I I, I, I heard, think, I'm forgetting they add cinnamon to something. But I I get what you yeah, mean. Yeah, like yeah, I get what you mean. So yay. All right, the final year and a today. Uh let me look at this quiz shows. Yeah, or nay. Quiz shows, like the Sidemen one. I mean, just like in in general, like a like, quiz show, like, like Jeopardy, it, yeah. like Jeopardy, uh, the weakest link, like the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, okay. Um, quiz shows. I would have to say, mm, yay! But the sad thing about it is they stuff them with ads really on TV. I mean, feel like so, that's a lot of things, right? Yeah. So Literally. that's why I don't watch TV. I usually yeah, just I just watch. On... Yeah, same. I used to watch shows on TV, but they would be recorded, and then I watch them after. Even, but even now, I don't even do that because there's like websites where you can, watch yeah, it and everything. So, so for me, I would say yay, just for the idea of like the show, and I used to love it as a kid. There was a show. If you get this like uh, answer right, you get a prize or like a show. If you win this competition, you get a brand new car. Like, like all of them, really. So, Jeopardy is all right. I mean, the families. Uh, it's, it's nice to see them bond. I'm joking. <laughs> I don't care about the families. But that's that's it's, family it's, feud. That's not Jeopardy. Yeah, that's not even Jeopardy. Yeah, family <laughs> feud. And uh, so what's Jeopardy and Family Feud? Aren't family they the feud, same thing? No, no. Family Feud's hosted by Steve Harvey. Two families face each other, and like, yeah, you, they like. There's a question like, um, what, what, what is a yeah, popular I know, I know. zoo animal? All right, and yeah, then, yeah, and then you say, the and then they're it's taking from a survey. Lion. But mm -hmm. Jeopardy's like, they give you an uh, answer, and then you give the question. Oh, so it's and the opposite. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. not even it's it's kind of different but yeah and then yeah it's just it's it's kind of different but for me it's a it's a yay just like showing yay, off like, what you sure. know it's fun like and just like for playing them or watching them both, so there's both both like both? Play, yeah like obviously in school we've played like jeopardy in class sometimes and that's always yeah. fun just a fun little thing where you're still learning but you're also having fun uh but watching them i don't really watch quiz shows i never really did but but I always like on YouTube. There's like YouTubers always do like imitations of the quiz shows, and I yeah. love watching those. Those are always fun to watch because it's a content creator you know, and then they're adding personality to it because and, and uh, more content to it because you can't really do that in a professional quiz show. But in YouTube quiz show, yeah, you're doing the quiz show, but you're also adding. It's also like when a group of friends do yeah. it and post it, and then uh, you see that they have like they know each other. They know how. Like the you can make is, it funny. Like, you can give it personality. Yeah. And not bland. Yeah, because like on real TV shows, really uh, not TV shows, quiz shows, you don't really always know the people with you. So you meet them the day of, and then yeah. So it's you don't know the, the, how to the make jokes. Tone yeah, is boring it's... sometimes mm -hmm. because of that. But yeah, 
Is it yay for you or nay for you? Quiz shows and playing, playing yay. Quiz shows to watch, nay, because like I'm not getting anything really. If I was okay. gonna g- g- win, yeah, you get what I mean. Yeah, I'd say yeah. yay for playing, nay for watching them on TV, yay for watching them on YouTube. <laughs> it's supposed YouTube, to be one yeah. yay and then we split them into three, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, and no, no, I want to answer the third one. The YouTube one where, like, the people are friends and I watch them. Yeah, yeah. All right. Then move on from the yay or nays to the first topic of the day. Uh, kind of a YouTube topic, topic with the same time. Face Clan. Yeah, relates, relates to the real world. The Face Clan crypto scam featuring Rice Gum and Summer Ray, But, and, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, Face members involved before we get into it. Face K his brother phase jarvis phase nikon and phase tico so yeah that was when i first saw it i was like okay this is gonna it's not that big of a deal obviously he's gonna apologize nothing else is really gonna happen it's gonna blow over but then i don't think i understood like how big and how bad what happened was because I, i'm also a fan of phase so maybe that diluted my judgment but then you saw the aftermath over the course of the couple of days so before i get into that though i'll, I'll explain what happened so phase clan they they were promoting a crypto coin called Save the Kids, which made it even worse because they were <laughs> scamming. They're scamming, right? And they're using kids to scam, like the just the brand of helping kids to, to help them scam, and that's you really puts puts them in the wrong over anything else. And I think what happened was it was a pump and dump. They were promoted it. Every a lot of their audience bought it, but they but then it was so it was doing really well right away. But then I think the, uh, it crashed, and then Phase sold everything. Yeah, they made it, profit, but you know crashed. everyone, all the people who, you know, the audience, Invested. they lost so much money. The investors, they you know, lost what much money. the reason for it to crash was Nelk. They released a statement on Instagram the same day I saying say that's that the reason. Bro, they I just said say it all helped. these influencers um, doing this stuff. They're trying to scam you. Don't put your money and your just gonna lose it and then the next day it just everybody's selling or like the same well, by that time it was for so many people it was already too late it was already crashing before that it already too late yeah for because so phase many phase kind of already they probably are already sold their shares out of that so yeah like the, uh-huh, the shares that are being sold initially is probably theirs and like you see this a lot right now everybody's doing yeah everybody's trying to promote crypto do crypto brand deals and because it's easy money for them and then they take advantage of their fan base or people uh who fall yeah fan base it's the big scam right now so many like people are you know because of this so many fans are trying to dig up what other youtubers have been doing with crypto, trying to you know find out if their wallets and stuff they found out like k had done this before or exactly something similar so yeah i also think that's also the twitter cancel culture but at the same time it's understandable why they're digging into these creators because it's such a big thing that that comes from one of the biggest you know um yeah organizations in youtube they say according to them the biggest gaming organ organization pretty much yeah yeah but yeah, so for them to do this, and he's such a big representative. Recently, he had a, his brother fought, and then he made the whole videos about it. He made that. It was the name of FaZe being uh, attacked, really, if this, yeah. like. And, uh, you know, when you reach power, like, what is Ben Parker said it best, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, you can go and uh, do that pump and dump, or like the tiktokers were doing uh list it for free but make shipping impossible like make it 20 dollars oh, yeah, for the shipping clothing, yeah yeah so it's it's really a lot of people do it but they got it worse because they're a part of the org and yeah. twitter cancel culture so and well yeah we'll discuss you know what happened mm-hmm. they got face k got kicked because i think not just because he seemed like you know he was the head of everything and he was because he was the one releasing the statement afterward apologizing and uh, maybe th- maybe also partially because they it seems to have he's done this before but so but yeah. the other three got suspended like indefinitely so that means like they'll keep investigating oh. to decide what happens to Bro, Tico, Nikon, and Jarvis. I have a theory that Ace K said he'll take the blame for them to stay in because he told he them about it. Like yeah, look, here's the thing: they could just space clone, could just suspend these three. For a month and until everything blows over, and then they bring them back, and every, everything will be fine yeah. except for a couple people 
but yeah, hating on them, but yeah. Yeah, that could I be mean, a thing. That could be a thing. So you want to tell them uh, what was their... Uh, so they scammed people on crypto, they got suspended, K got kicked out, uh, and... Uh, how do you feel about that? Would they, would you have like dealt with it differently? As, uh, yeah, at first, I was same... like, that's harsh. Okay, I apologize. He was naive. But then I thought about it, watched more videos. He wasn't naive. He knew what he was doing. Like, I was a fan of gay, So, like, I took a side at first. But then... Like, Holy! <laughs> watching... <laughs> You're insane, Jarvis. You're insane. <laughs> You're insane, Jarvis. Cheating again. Bro, you... Jarvis You're cheating see... twice. Once in Fortnite, yeah. once in the crypto space. So, K, okay, right? We... He got, he got kicked. And so I was, I took the, his side at first, you know, like I was a fan, I'm a fan of K, maybe still am, depending on how he responds to the situation. But so I was like, okay, he, he was, he was naive. He didn't know what was going on. He apologized, whatever. But watching more videos on it and like looking at more other creators, what they're saying, I realized he knew exactly what I was doing. He's done this before. He was just trying to make money. Maybe this is a mistake and, you know, come back from this. Because this isn't, this is definitely something he come back from, but it's still yeah. such a bad thing he did, and he, I, I'm not gonna defend him. So he deserved to deserves to get kicked. And these other three, I was like, I was taking the same stance. Okay, a suspension is fine. That's what K should have gotten. But, but now I'm, I'm they thinking, knew, they know yeah, exactly. Bro. They know what they were doing too. They, they stuck with K throughout it. Even if they... K was the leader. So I understand the suspension because it wasn't the leader, but I definitely think. They need to investigate yeah. further and make a decision whether they want to keep them or kick them. And kicking them should still be a possibility. It should always be a possibility. I mean, Nikon, such an old member, really, since like the New York house, or is that like since yeah. 2011? Something and, like that, yeah. Yeah, and then Tico also. These are his Swedish guy in the group, IKEA. He spawned in IKEA in New York and then they brought him home. So <laughs> I'm not being. Uh, what is it called? Uh, not trying to. Uh, You're not being racist. <laughs> yeah, he, that's their joke, and he yeah, wears he, IKEA he, merch. He found him in an IKEA cupboard. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. But I want to talk about more of expanding on this because what's been leaked recently. I don't know if you saw this. It was Faze Banks, the owner of Faze, and really oh, good yeah, friends I with these that. guys, right? Big supporter of them. He was the one who made the final decision and to kick and suspend these guys and that was like wow because I, honestly i thought here's two theories i have i thought it wouldn't it would just be more the management side that decided to kick them not like yeah you know, the literal they're... public owners because they're boys right but banks deciding to kick them was a revelation and also that spawned a new theory for a lot of people that banks was involved in this still because you know he's the big like person in the crypto space and youtube too yeah but it spawned a theory where he's he was involved in it too but he's kicking them so blame can come off of him like and stuff like that so that's one theory but i don't know we, we honestly it could be that but it could be the complete opposite where he just he saw yeah. he sees what they do done wrong and he has to take you know, responsibility he has to take sometimes. action yeah but i don't think if he actually did that like was involved and he's trying to get the attention off of him if one of them speaks it's gonna backfire k, is, k said at least on uh, keemstar said that k phase k is supposed to make a statement on it on uh, making yeah. a new video on it releasing mm -hmm. other people who were involved so maybe if that's banks or not We'll never know, but maybe releasing more other phase people. members. Yeah, Suppose, wow. supposedly there So are he's gonna bring down people. everybody with him. So yeah. I mean, I, I, it's understandable because I think that it's not. Yeah, maybe he's snaking his boys, you could say, but it also helps his public image, and it's the right thing to do because I think a lot of people are pressuring him to make a statement. And if you're making a statement, yeah. you have to say who else is involved, or it's just awkward and yeah, and yeah. Personally, I like always found K and like I enjoyed his content. You really don't know much about their life other than they what they put on camera. Yeah, you think you but do, when, but you really don't. But you really don't like uh, what is it? The rice gum was on live, and then recently, and then he started yelling at fans. Have you seen that video? Actually, like no. He, I think that was fine though, because that's the thing. Here's the thing: they were bothering him in a private yeah. thing, and he asked that you want to take a picture. They said no. They kept yeah. bothering. Those guys were weird. It's understandable. It, it was but... odd that confrontation, to be it honest. Was, uh... Like they dapped him up, and then he stood like his stomach was touching the rice gum's face, and then he's like social distancing, like uh, stay away. But he just dapped him up, and uh, yeah, rice gum. Should he get? Well, let's uh, talk about trouble, rice gum really? because 
But yeah. Ice Cube lives in the Cloud House, in the same house as Faze Banks, right? So yeah. that's like that was also confusing because you know Rice Gum Summer I both have have gotten no consequences, not really any public, uh, you know, lash. They haven't faced mm-hmm. any. Uh, what's the word? Uh, f- consequences. Flack. We'll say yeah. flack. Right? Yeah. I haven't yeah. faced any flack, but. You know, Rice Gum responded to the situation on his Twitch, and this is what has gotten him a lot of flack, just his response to it. He was trying to backtrack and say, oh, I never was really that involved. I only posted my Twitter, never posted on my Insta, never really promoted it, but then I deleted my tweet. Like, bro, you were involved, you still promoted it. Stop trying to get out of it, right? And he's also making fun of, you know, like making fun of the situation about K getting kicked, like saying, oh, you want to scam more? I'm here or whatever. Or some making some kind of joke about scamming. And like people got angry and understandably so because he never really responded to it he never really made a statement on about himself being involved in it and and he banks has so far said nothing on rice gum and since they live with them we don't know what goes behind behind closed doors yeah. but no public statement has released and really the worst thing that can happen to rice gum him getting kicked out of, no not the here's worst the, thing but... here's the thing this is a criminal offense this could be a criminal offense that could it yeah it really? could send them to jail these guys so k is liable to go to jail I mean, yeah his work visa can be liable too because yeah, he's on his... visa in the united yeah, states exactly so this could be blow over on everyone and uh, really ruin this household name phase yeah and that's like that's one other point i want to bring up what it, the how the phase phase clan themselves the relationships between banks and just everyone not involved with yeah. everyone involved has to be damaged it's repairable it's not like it's not like, you know, the biggest mistake ever. It's not like they ever, did yeah. something extremely cool. I think what made it bigger was they used saving the kids as to promote it more. But You know, Logan Paul's promoting a coin. I think it's about... Uh, yeah, I saw that too. People will come about, for that. Yeah, is it about like maybe... Uh, I don't know the do details say? of that. But. Feces, uh, is, is it about... Or is it? You don't know much about no, that. No, not at all. Let's I just, just know he is. continue. But yeah, yeah, but... he is promoting, and he's been like a main guy. So it's probably not just him. He's probably gonna out everybody who's doing it on social media. Who okay. cares? Just okay. Like, would he just yeah. out his face buddies? Or I don't. Yeah, we don't know if more face buddies them. are involved. Like, yeah. And I I want to see how the dynamic changes between all of them. What's gonna happen? Yeah. They're still gonna stay friends and all of that. But, like, I also want to see more information come out about Kay's past wrongdoings about this. Because if he's done this multiple times, like, then it's more like, I don't know, how, how are you going to come back or, on this? For like, the other three, he's... it's comebackable because I'm assuming it's the first time. Uh, has he ever uh, promoted another coin? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh. He has. He's promoted. And, like, if you want to just... check out the more details, the uh, YouTube channel called CoffeeZilla, he explains everything. Oh, okay. About it, just digging into it. But, yeah, like, I want to see more information come out of that, but I think this is this is good. It came out. It's creating causing more creators to be take more responsibility and be more careful mm-hmm. about the crypto space because it's a dangerous space. It is. It's uh, very volatile. It's like a bubble. It'll burst any second. Exactly. Whether uh, you're up, down, you're always gonna lose. I mean, uh, people can get lucky, invest, and then make it one day, but it's really scary. Not scary, it's very... And it's online, a, right? So it's way easier really, for something to go uh, yeah. wrong. Way easier to get hacked, way easier for a scam yeah. to happen, like what we what we. There seen. isn't really a math to the equation. It's just random what happens. So obviously, so there's a, to an extent, you can predict, but obviously, it's still like it's not that reliable. So at the end of the day, scams are just yeah. making it even worse. And it's good that more are coming out, especially from these high tier influencers that are taking over the world. Yeah. You think Summer Rae would f- uh, face any consequences either? She's probably the least likely because she's like, got, she's like the least controversial out of everyone that's involved. Yeah. So like, I think it's possible, but I think she's, no, I don't the think least people, her fan guy. base won't care. I don't think, the twelve-year-olds, exactly. the twelve-year-old stands, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I wanna, I wanna see what's gonna happen okay. and maybe we'll report more of this in the yeah. future. If Phase cut, does uh, survive, would you? Th- what would your Phase name be? Yeah, if Phase does survive. We do that as the final thing to end the segment. What would my Phase name be if I joined Phase? Well, my gamer tag is Ashers. It's a bit. It seems a bit weird, but. 
my name is Oshwath, shorten it, it's Ash. And then like on Fortnite, there's a, a lot of people added RR to the end of their names because this pro player named CRR. So I just added that. And then I was taking them when I was playing Fortnite. So I just added a Z because Asher just kind of flows well. And then I just use it in Valorant right now. So yeah, maybe that phase Asher's. <laughs> what about you? Oh, that's a really cool one. So I have a friend whose name on PS4 is Arabian Sands. And then it has like, it has ties to his, like, where he's from, and then Sand and that. So I was like, oh, face Sands? Would that, like, be cool? Sands? What is Sands? Or just Sand. Oh, Sands. Oh, face oh, Sands. Just, so, I mean, yeah. I don't know. That's the one I have really in mind. And uh, I don't know if I could keep it. He'll probably sue me for that now that I told <laughs> him because he knows. <laughs> so we're going to move on from the face Clan topic. Talk about the Olympics, which, well, actually, before we get onto this topic, we'll go more in depth about maybe the issues and roots of the problems in another episode where we're going to bring on a special guest for it but right now we're going to talk about shikari richardson one of the considered one of the fastest women from america uh she was going to go she, she, the fastest woman in yeah, america pretty i think much. she beat the record yeah, yeah exactly so she's you know she's one of the representatives to go to olympics after getting top three in a qualifying race but she was tested positive for marijuana. THC, which isn't marijuana, yeah. Well, and then the rules, okay, says it's no marijuana, no, uh, you know, performance-enhancing drugs, and marijuana is, like, listed as one of them. So with this, they're kicking her out. Uh, they're not allowing her to compete in the 2021 20, now, Tokyo Olympics, yeah. isn't she? It's only, here's yeah. the thing, there's... There's only a one month ban because the intent was not to p enhance her performance. Yeah, yeah. And I'll I'll get to that later. What later? Why mm -hmm. I don't think it actually enhances performance. But uh, it was only a one month ban, and I think I think it was said that her mother died, so she started using marijuana. Yeah, as the way biological to mother's yeah. thing. Yeah. Like how a lot of people use alcohol to cope with, you know, bad news or anything like that. She used marijuana instead, which unfortunately yeah. is banned. Unlike alcohol. So it's it's a one month ban and uh, she smoked in a from not from anything she's not gonna face legal problems she's just yeah. gonna face because problems marijuana the sport. she smoked in oregon and it's legal there, oregon so. it's legal in oregon and uh, like you say this but like uh we're gonna take different stance on this podcast one with and one uh, against yeah. it you get what i mean yeah. so you want to address that now so I mean, so only the whole segment. We can do a little thing, a debate, a yeah. little debate. But yeah, yeah. All that's, I want to say, marijuana is not a performance-enhancing drug. I don't know. What, it's not even here. I'm not really debating that she, she should shouldn't have been like banned because the the rules are the rules. Like yeah, you know the, rules the rules are the rules. But I'm more like debating why marijuana shouldn't affect like a player like getting banned. Oh. It shouldn't be have to be tested because. Bro, I've, I've Even, seen multiple studies like mm -hmm. that shows like it's not actually performance. It doesn't enhance performance. If anything, it decreases because like, it more into decision making. It, I know yeah. I'm not arguing that she shouldn't yeah, be banned. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. saying that mm -hmm. it shouldn't be in the rules. Like it shouldn't be in the rules. Like well, wait, let me finish. It's let me finish. legal because it's yeah, yeah. decision making. You don't have decision making. That's gonna worsen your ability to perform. It, it's uh, risk your health like technically so that's going to worsen your ability form actually that's one of the reasons why it's banned not just because it's performance enhancing because it risks the a participant's health so that's understandable but i don't can she it. smoke regular uh, anything on the you can i think so here's the thing you can smoke marijuana the uh before the the olympics happen but you can't test positive like there's a certain amount you can take without testing positive but she, yeah, can you smoke? I'm that. meaning like regular cigars, cigarettes, or yeah, uh, for sure. You, you you don't you can't really test that. So yeah, I guess so. So with that, I don't know. Like they the in her case, I feel bad because like she's coping from a loss, and yeah. she said in an interview interview that she doesn't want anyone's forgiveness. She just wants yeah. everyone to understand that it was difficult for her. And she doesn't and want anyone her... to say, "Oh, she should have not yeah. been banned." She's and that's the good, that's like, I think uh, uh, that's ain't her a lot of approval. Like, mm -hmm. she, she comes out, she doesn't make any excuses, she admits what she did yeah. wrong, she knew the rules, she still broke them. But she's just, yeah. she's giving, telling her story to make people understand 
the reasons behind it, even if it wasn't you know, the right choice. That's the most respectable thing she could have done. Exactly. Because if she tried to fight it, that's like, oh, they're trying to fight it. But now she admitted to her mistake, and then she said she will try to improve. She said her side of the story, her losing a loved one, and uh, really, that's very respectable. She apologized to her fans, the sponsors, uh she apologized to the haters too <laughs> in her interview. Yeah, she so, uh, she even said she doesn't. It's not really about the c people criticizing her. Aren't really haters. She's just just maybe taking a more uh, aggressive stance. Yeah. On, on facts, right? So yeah. I think that's improved her in the public eye, especially for the people who are critiquing her. I mm -hmm. think they've probably gained more respect for her, and uh, yeah, she'll she. I think she can definitely come back from this. She she's only twenty two. Yeah, that's the thing. So that's she's in like she has a whole career ahead of her, right? Like yeah, fourth year of college type thing, twenty two. So she has a whole way to go, and uh, she can even beat her record today. And would they count her record as a win? Because I heard heard somewhere that they're counting it because uh, she tested for THC. They're uh, what is it? Oh, I think they her, might. Uh, I think I think they might have disqualified her record. But even then, she can do it again, bro. She's. Yeah, she's gonna. She's not giving up, right? And yeah. she almost had a chance to prove herself again. Like, at she was. I think she was eligible to do the a relay race, a four hundred meter mm -hmm. or something relay race. But I think it was like today or t yesterday was announced that she couldn't participate in it. So that's sad to see. But again, she made a statement on that too, saying obviously if the opportunity arises to participate in this relay, she'll take it. But she's not gonna be really sad or angry about it if she can't because she needs to deal with her own issues first and i really respect yeah. that you don't you don't want to go into the competition not with the wrong attitude with the wrong mental state yeah that could make everything worse so I, I think it's good you focus on she's focusing on her uh own issues and mental health before you know going into anything again yeah that's the uh, respect the, you know your limits you know your respect to even put out that it. you know you want to focus on your mental health because that's like a stigma yeah you know? that's a stigma mm -hmm. and like being a med like olympian you imagine someone has that's like a country behind their shoulders yeah. imagine that i so, pressure from that yeah her uh, the pressure she takes the hard work she puts in yeah i'm congr like i'm sorry this happened to you but I'm I'm support you in whatever you choose to do. Yeah, I think there's also some conspiracy theories before I move on that there's I, I don't want to go too deep into this because we yeah, discussed yeah. this more, but there's like people you know like Olympics have put out you can't t I don't think you can take a knee at uh at the Olympics. There's a lot of stuff due to related to Black Lives Matter that have been banned and pe I've, yeah. I think I was seeing a like a literally like a portfolio of things. Like where, you know, black, it seems like black people are being impressed by the Olympics where a lot of people like even like a lot of black people aren't don't want to participate or some can't participate. So there's a conspiracy that, you know, this thing is just another thing like that. I think this might be a bit different because she was uh, she, she, she yeah. broke the rules. So and she admitted it. So that's I think th though that separates from what I mentioned. But there's definitely something going on there with olympics and you know like just uh black lives matter the movement and everything to do yeah with that. So, which we'll mention in our next podcast yeah, with a so, special guest the special guest find out next time so we're gonna move on from shikari richardson and we're gonna the final topic of the day just deviate from the news topic uh tv show rankings it's been a while it's been coming for a while we're finally gonna do it and maybe not necessarily rankings but at least our favorite our TV shows, and... explaining why they're our favorites and what's good about them. So, do you want to start us off, Abdul? All right, uh, so let's go from like uh, the genres we like. So, the genres I really like are like maybe comedies. Like when they have like comedy, I hate when there's like love life. That <laughs> well, just makes uh, you like want to romantic comedies. You don't romantic, like yeah, romantic when it's like about uh, a character's love life. I just. It makes me want to, like, not puke, but like, I don't <laughs> want to watch that, really. So, I I re yeah, so, really, like, not much love life, maybe if, not, not too into love life, but yeah, that's one thing I have, no love, like, uh, that thing. And then, like, my, I like more of comedy, there's a sitcom, if I'm watching a sitcom, I like a comedy sitcom, not, like, uh, uh, 
crime fighting sitcom because like I've seen what is it called uh, the TV show about uh, it's about a show about like they fight crime and uh, they're FBI with the behavioral analysis unit and then like it got really boring like the second season in because it's the same thing and it's for yeah, now could for get seasons. Can, yeah so I'll find I remember the name and I'll shout it out but yeah like oh. crime crime it's all right it's all right but when it's in sitcom well, not sitcom like when it's repetitive when it's always the same thing it doesn't it's suit not, me, not like, actually the same thing but just the same themes the same situation yeah 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 like with gotham it's about crime but it's not the same situation no, i think that's crime. also the fact that gotham is it's uh, batman yeah it's, it's batman <laughs> when he's younger and just can draw from the comics so yeah my favorite genres I don't really like stand a lot, like I don't like shows that are focused on comedy. Here's the thing: I don't like shows that are focused on one genre except for drama. Yeah. I love, I love me some drama shows. Like, bro, oh. it's just like it's like you know you're watching, like people make this joke all the time. Like when drama yeah. happens in front of them in real life, they they want some popcorn, just sit in front of them and eat popcorn. It's like that except more polished in TV show form. And watching yeah. drama unfold because drama is gonna be in every show, but when a show is focused mm-hmm. on drama and that's the plot. I think it's really interesting to see how it unfolds because you don't know where it's going to go. But I love drama with action because I used to like only action movies. But like now that I think about it, a movie that's mainly about action is not that interesting. It's just the effects and everything. But yeah, action, action and drama, comedy and action, comedy and drama. Like, yeah, I don't I like all those combos. Yeah. I like, like you don't like romance that much. I would not watch a mainly romance movie, but I love I, I love watching, you know, just relationships unfold in, mm-hmm. in TV shows and just, like, just at least as side plots, the, the romance, you know. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting to, interesting to watch. And then you touched upon crime. I've watched, I guess Gotham is a crime show, but at the same time, I don't, I see it also as a kind of a superhero show, kind of an action Yeah, show. that's, that's, like, one I really didn't want to confuse because I really loved Gotham watching yeah. it. And, like, now that I think about it, also drama, that drama thing, it's not... The romance really is the drama, like which unfolds. Like, oh, yeah, I can't. Oh my god, that, you betrayed really. me! No. Yeah, <laughs> like, a, a little twist. bit of that, but not like being the main plot or yeah. drama. Yeah, so. I understand. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then but, there's. Uh, you continue, continue. Yeah, crime. I watched roll. another crime show I watched it's called Quantico. The FBI. It's it's like Quantico, the TV show I was talking about. It's, yeah. uh, Except, it's, I think with Quantico, it's also. It's not. It's an, only just crime. There's a lot of drama too, so that makes it interesting when you mix drama and crime because there's all these plot twists to do with the crime. Like, oh, it's this guy, but no, it's actually this guy, but no, it's actually this person. So that it's yeah. interesting to see who would eventually commit the crime, and then you see all these side plots unfold with the relationships between different suspects and all that. So Quantico is a pretty good show. I never watched the third season because I saw the plot. Didn't I didn't think it would be interesting. Maybe I'll get oh. to it. But Quantico season one, I really liked. Got a bit. Sometimes it got a bit messy, but it was a good show, and it's definitely a watch for people who like like crime but don't like want to watch hard crime shows like How to Get Away with Murder or something. Yeah, How to Get Away with Murder. I see it a lot of times, but yeah, Quantico. I I think it's a similar show, but like after two seasons, it got like stale for me. Like that's, yeah, that's probably why it ended on a third season. So yeah, and then no, it's it ended on fifteen. It's oh no! Like oh, which one are you thing. talking about? Oh, you're not. I thought uh, you were talking about. Uh, t- oh no! Is Quantico it called? Ended, is it called? No, no. It ended at three. Are you talking about Criminal Minds? Yes. Yeah, fifteen seasons. It's on yeah, Netflix. That, so I, I saw it. Yeah. Show, that definitely oh, looked like something oh. that would get repetitive. It did get repetitive. Like it's always a serial killer, and then like you always know it's like this guy, and then. But like the cast, their relationship together is what made it like interesting. Like. uh where their, their background and what they deal with, but really, I didn't like it. And then there's a TV show called SWAT, which is crime, which I, I liked, because it's like, they're, uh, it's like action, really. So they're fighting the bad guy, there's a story, they're, they're in LA, they are the SWAT division, they deal with stuff every day, and it shows their home life too, like the main character, his father is like severing, suffering from cancer, and then he adopted his friend's kid, because he went to jail. So it's like, uh, into and then the other character is uh, is uh, what is it? bisexual, so her That's love good. life is is a thing. Oh. And then a Christian man of God, and then his family and 
how they deal with stuff and it's it's really like interesting i would say and then seeing a tv show called mind hunter have you seen it no i feel like i've heard of it though it's like it's on netflix i'm sure and then they talk about uh it's the division that made criminal minds a thing. It's the division that ma- wrote all these, uh, you know how they say, oh, a guy who <clears throat> likes children, he he blah, 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 blah. He probably wears blue shoes. You get what I mean? Yeah. You, if you've seen the show, they, it's like the show about them interviewing serial killers. So they interview like the Ma- Manson and then the That's guy from New York. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting. Delve into the minds of... It's like yeah. a kind of documentary thing, delving into the minds yeah, of characters. Yeah. Why do they do this? Their motivations. But for me, I haven't watched much other crime other than that. But mm-hmm. you know, teen shows are the ones that I watch the most, and it's the majority of the shows I watch. And uh, you know, among I think most of my favorite TV shows are teen shows. Like teen shows. I'll give some uh, some of my favorites. Thirteen Reasons Why, a controversial one. I know you were. Yeah, it's it. it's all right. It's all right. Con- Thirteen Reasons Why. I get why it's controversial, but like, For yeah, sure. viewer discretion advised. But it's a good piece of. Uh, yeah, just uh, people have been lights. like, you know, people thought they were. It's a, I'll give a quick rundown. A girl commits suicide. At least this is for the first season, and then she yeah. releases tapes. About the reason she killed herself, and then you know the drama un- unfolds from there. But and, and then people say because it, people say that they were martyring suicide by doing that. But it's understandable. Yeah. I can see why. But at the end of the day, it's also a TV show, so they have to make it interesting at some point. But I can see mm-hmm. why. But they also have to deal with it at least kind of well, which I think they did. They just definitely could have done some spots better, maybe more sensitivity, maybe ended mm-hmm. the that, that some plots better, but. I don't think they did a really bad show, bad job. And for me, I really liked the show as not just uh, representing real life issues, but as a show itself. Just yeah, how everything unfolded, the the different characters and how they developed throughout the series, and you know how enemies turn into friends, how friends turn and, into yeah. enemies, and just and then you start liking the enemy. And yeah, then, exactly. Like and then so you many, start hating. Yeah, and you, you could see it inside the minds of the bad guys. But the, at the end of the day, they're teens. None of them are yeah. the villains of the show, right? But you can see them, even if they've done so much wrong, you can see their background and what well, maybe caused them to do the, do this. And yeah, and maybe give you some to insight do good into real life. Yeah, and willingness yeah. to also be good, not just bad. Yeah. I mean that that was a good teen show I've seen, and then really I haven't seen I've seen on my block. It's about a teen. I know that's where, not as serious. It's definitely more comedic. It's more of a funny yeah. uh, comedic one. It's not as but serious. It's still, it's, but it's still it's still serious. It's about like, like one of the characters. Uh, his family's he's he's in a family of gangsters, and then the gangster like they tell you all oh, the gang was founded to protect the children of this block because like all oh, the people of this block because the other gang was too ruthless and then like oh now okay you sympathize with the gang i guess and then there's a uh, uh, other t- cast where his like her mother's abandoned them and then her father is a truck driver and comes back home every little while and then another one is uh uh, em- like immigrant family living. Uh, There's a bunch of different people, just dynamics, and then yeah, they meet, and then, then it's just the story I would connect. Uh, I really like that one story, and for me, it, it was a yay as a teen show. <laughs> and have you ever seen? Uh, name a few, maybe I've seen them too. Like if you want to discuss um, another teen show, I really like. I don't think I don't think you've seen this one. I'm pretty sure you've told me. I've mentioned it called Degrassi. Ran for about twenty seasons, more, more oh, even. Okay. But this is getting me to a question: What's the longest series you've ever watched? This one, like about. There's even more than twenty seasons, but the main part of the show is twenty. Twenty seasons. Season? It's similar, like it handles a lot of serious issues, but I think yeah. it does an even better job than Thirteen Reasons Why, especially with the, they do handle stuff like suicide and rape, and I think they handle it. They don't delve into it a lot, like in Thirty Reasons Why, because they don't need to just to send out the message. So they they delve into it as much as they need to. They don't go farther than they need to, and yeah. they deal with the topic with sensitivity. They're not showing the suicide like they did in Thirty Reasons Why. Eventually, that was cut because of backlash, but it was still there. But I think Degrassi's a great teen show that deals with serious issues, but can also get lighthearted at times, and that's what makes it a great show. And that's why I lasted for. 20 seasons and another thing 
the they actually look their age unlike most tv shows especially tv shows from the cw they the teenagers yeah. were actually like they started as the a lot of them started as 11 year olds playing 11 year olds and they and like they looked like 11 year olds because yeah if you're playing, going for the long haul you like, gotta yeah. get young kids playing older maybe so it works out really exactly so and... they they didn't look like 26 year olds playing 16 year olds because yeah it shows like you see shows like <laughs> you, you, like exactly she shows like riverdale where they're all yeah. hella buff everyone has a six pack everyone has a chiseled jaw like bro yeah. these guys aren't teenagers and they don't look like teenagers yeah. and they don't pass for teenagers but there's a movie yeah. it's like a guy's the guy's 30 and then he's like all built and then he's playing a 16 year old but he's short that's the thing that's why he fit into that role so like what the even like how would you even make that but i guess he's a household name i forgot the guy's name so that's he probably is the eyeballs for the movie and like my longest show that i've ever seen is a 1982 tv show called cheers yeah i know it's, that one uh, Bro, it's my icon it's been go that's a long show yeah i don't remember yeah. that long isn't that still going i feel like i don't know oh no no no, no. maybe that's, I a, wish different it was still that's going. a different show yeah you're probably that. thinking of another tv show yeah it's ended at either season 11 or 12 and like the cast now are like in their late life like yeah they're late almost in their uh, late in their life so like the thing is they're always in a bar it's a sitcom and they're always in a bar <laughs> that's a cool that's the thing it's like the everybody you see the strip yeah mm -hmm. there's the owner sam malone ladies guy and then there's like uh norm he goes to work has a like he's done with his wife, he goes to the bar, gets to gets to hang out with his friends, and that's like his character. And uh, he's the, he's the, my icon on the, what is it on Zoom? <laughs> if you if if you guys are with us at school in the same grade, and uh, there's Cliff, mailman in encyclopedia, he knows everything, and then he just babbles. And then Woody Harrelson is actually in that TV show. Wow, you know, the, sounds like a yeah. Maybe he not a show young. that has a lot of plot, but a show that can definitely yeah. I mean, be a they, funny one. It's a sitcom where like they meet at the bar every day, and there's like a different uh, story to it. Like it's really good uh, for me. I watched it, and then I didn't have the heart to watch last season because I don't want it to end. <laughs> I still you haven't save seen it. it. You sa save it for I, when you you yeah. yeah you need it, but. Let's it's talk about a show we years. both love. And love. Yeah, we both Cobra love. Kai. Uh, Cobra Kai. That's a, we've already had a segment about it. That's a well-written show. I, I, I just, it's so hard to find a fault with that show because they handle yeah. everything well. There's no really weird plot twists or just to like for there to be, there's there's no things that are there just to be there. Yeah, it all flows well. They and once again, these teenagers for the most part they look like teenagers, even though the yeah, actors a lot of them are in their twenties. They still, at least they found actors that don't look like they're, they 20. have to be in their 20s. No, they can fit in both. They can fit say. in both, is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. And it's also a very relatable show. It deals you with You know, the reason bullying. I loved it, because I loved Jackie Chan movies growing up. Because, like, you it's know, a like... movie, bro. At the end of the day, it's, a, it's an action movie, action TV show, along with drama. But it's always yeah. cool to watch karate sequences. I've always liked it. Yeah, yeah. Movies. Karate, karate. I used to do karate a long time ago. I know you do karate okay. right now. Yeah, it's it's a fun sport. I would. Say. Obviously, the things art. that happen in these TV shows are as are realistic. Out of the but world. But Cobra Kai, I think definitely there are a couple. It's more realistic than. Oh yeah, stuff. you go. Wait, what? A gang of karate kids go into school and then <laughs> what the? And then beat up teachers. That's so unrealistic. But <laughs> That's it's true. fun to see. It's it's fun so, to see. It's a good show. And you know, yeah. uh, it had a lot of hype too. And it, it's not like a show that that had a whole lot of hype and then let the fans the down. Yeah, yeah. Also, that they have legacy in it, and it mm -hmm. meant to the hype. It it, it didn't uh, it really disappoint. Did. It doesn't disappoint. It didn't disappoint at all. I mean, I would watch it again, but I really have more like I don't have time on my hands. Yeah, it's yeah, understandable. And there's another teen show. Yeah. Teen shows 
uh, if they're done well, they they can be yeah. re- re- very relatable, like Cobra Kai and like especially Cobra yeah. Kai and Degrassi. I mentioned Th- these shows are very relatable because they deal with everyday issues you might see, but also issues that a lot of people deal with that might okay. not be everyday. Yeah, well, let's just uh, fire off honorable mentions and uh, we see if we've both seen it. Uh, you want me to start, and then we say our favorite TV show at the end, and then we talk about it. Okay, is that good with you? I have no and idea then... what I'm gonna say for my favorite, but I'll uh, think on it. <laughs> Uh, have you seen Good Place? No, but I've seen it on Netflix. I know it's a good comedy that people have recommended me, so I might check it. Yeah. Uh, you have any? Uh, you want me to explain it or? Uh, it's it's guys. Uh, yeah. So people it. die and then they they're sent to hell, but hell is trying a new kind of torture where they torture themselves and then they turn good after that torture and then uh, really. Uh, it's them. It's the argument that where should they go I had now? I no idea that's good. what it was. I thought it was just yeah. like a regular in real life show. I didn't know it, that was okay. That's interesting. Yeah, that's making I mean, me want to check it out more. Yeah, it's it's really good. And then like they, there's point system. If you're like one above one good, you go to heaven. And then uh, oh, yeah, it's cool. it's really good. It ended unfortunately. Five but, seasons yeah. though. Good run. Mm-hmm. But uh, okay, my one of mine, Elite. It's it's a European show, Spanish show, but mm-hmm. I know a lot of people like watching it in the original language. I watched an English dub. It's just easy to understand for me, but yeah, it's a yeah. really good show. It's on Netflix. High School Murder Mystery, bro. It has everything. The drama, and you know when you're dealing with teens and murder mystery. You there's going to be cover-ups, betrayals, yeah. plot twists, uh, relationship drama, everything, bro. It's like so many things combined into one, and they yeah. and it doesn't get that messy. It, get, it, it combines everything really well. It doesn't you know, just move on thing to the side after they're done with it. They, things come back, pop up, and you, yeah. you don't expect. And it's a very good show that is very well, like, again, it's very well written. The dialogue is the dialogue is actually one of the best parts of the show and incorporates many different elements. And it's released its fourth reason, season recently, and it's just as good as the other seasons, and I'm excited for it to yeah more seasons. Another honorable mention for me is... Uh... What do I have to say? Let me just say the one on top of my head. Lucifer. Uh, it's very popular on Netflix, and uh, it's about actual devil. It's in the DC universe, like, located yeah, on yeah. Earth 666, like, triple six for a uh, devil. And then uh, he's there, and then it's him. Like, I guess you learn, like, in, in the thing, like, his backstory and how he became the devil and how he was wronged and... Like, it's not like real depiction, but it's like a new narrative that I've never seen before, which is, I like seeing, really, and it's about him getting good, and then finding love, the devil falling in love, and then, like, becoming really human, actually. I, uh, let's have a quick discussion about the, uh, DCCW shows, because I know we both right. watch it. So, yes. Like, we have Arrow, good show, gritty, dark. But also, good, great comedic timing. Uh, yeah. Good characters. Good show RCW shows are never going to be up there, up there. Like, mm-hmm. they, a lot of them get worse as time goes on. But they definitely have their good moments. And they're definitely still good shows overall. Yeah. But... Like, CW shows, like, you see them that when they run for, like, maybe six or seven years, they have that one season that's bad. And then they improve on it. You get yeah. what I mean? Maybe, like, well, yeah, that one or two seasons. And then they come back. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, Arrow is, Arrow is one of the probably one of the best DC shows. And then there's Flash. For me, I've definitely gone bored of it. I think that's I used to like it a lot, but now it's definitely down there for me. It's just it feels weird for me to say yeah. because watching season six right now or season seven, and I've actually stopped because it just got boring for me. But in the beginning, the like it's still a comic show, and I'm a comic fan, so all these villains yeah. from the comics and all these characters from the comics are really cool to see, and that's really what's. Yeah. making me stick with these shows too. For, yeah. for me I loved Arrow my Arrow was my favorite TV show my first ever TV show that I watched like by myself like oh I'm gonna go watch a TV show and since they cancelled it or like they ended it I've sworn off all of DC I'm not I haven't seen a DC TV show nah, since bro, there's new blood you, there's new blood bro like Star yeah. Girl it's one of the it's it's had its first season it's one of the best dc shows i've seen after just one season and like flash, it, it's another yeah. teen show which probably mm-hmm. makes me like it more but it's a it's definitely a new blood that i think the c uh, not just uh the cw yeah it's part of the cw yeah. it's new blood that it needed 
for sure. You know, I'll take I'll take back my statement. I like Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's sometimes it's cringe, but at the same time, it's so funny at times, and it's funny action. It doesn't get too serious ever, really. No, it, it's not then, serious at all. It's like and just the things that funny. it's time travel, and everyone likes Man. some time travel, right? They go like to visit what is it, Marie Antoinette? And you also and learn some like, history. You also yeah, it's like history. let them eat cake. That's what we learned in like uh, in like ninth grade. So, like, that's why the uprising happened, because she said, oh, let them eat cake. We don't have bread, let them eat cake. And then she used to host parties a lot, and you see one of her yeah. lavish parties. So you, it's, it's a show where it's a good show itself. It involves it's not, history. And you, yeah. you learn, but it's not boring how you learn it. They see Rasputin, they kill him once, but he doesn't die, and then... <laughs> <laughs> oh, a bunch of... It, it's a crazy show that can get messy yeah. at times, but eventually all fits in. What about... Yeah. What are some other... There's Titans. It's not necessarily a CW show, but Titans for you, yeah. It's not. I would say I, it's probably one of my least favorite. I I really like mm-hmm. the concept, and there were definitely moments, and the fight scenes are incredible. But yeah, it just had it had such a slow pace, and then at the final two two episodes or so, the villain just comes yeah. in for a little bit, and then it's just like they're gone. And the second season, they had it definitely improved where villain was there throughout but the it just the build-up seemed lackluster and i'm hoping season three they're bringing fan favorites in like the red hood everyone like oh. jason todd and then barbara gordon back like who used to be batgirl so that we'll see how that improves but barbara gordon yeah. oh okay now i know uh that's the gordon's daughter okay i get it i get it i get it it's from the now I see it from Gotham. That's the daughter of the main character, or like one of the main two characters. completely unrelated shows, but with some yeah, like, with same characters. But are there any yeah. other DC shows? I would say uh, DC. No, for me, there's probably are Supergirl. Ones. Supergirl. You, I watched you, the first season you like and then yeah. quit in the season season two. I might get back to it, but I think that's the most average show that the CW has. It hasn't really had any bad, maybe one bad season, but hasn't had any really great seasons. Like, the first season was pretty good, second season was pretty good. After that, it's either been average or subpar, but it's an ending, yeah. so... But it it's had ending. a good run, it had a good run, yeah. And Batwoman, we're not gonna speak about that. Yeah, we want to just talk about the monstrosity that's Batwoman. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're like, oh my god, female character, this is gonna be dope, and then, the, like, uh, they it failed her, and then she, didn't she left? Yeah, yeah she the left. main actor left. They replaced her. It, it's not. It's not bad. It's like the season two might have been better, and, and like it didn't get yeah. worse because of the replacement. But it just hasn't really gone that much better. But yeah, what is your favorite show then? Since we've uh, honorable uh, mention recently, I've watched Lupin. Honorable. It's a French uh, show on Netflix. Wait, what is it's, it called? I watch it. Lupin. Lupin. It's about a book. So it's a it's a book where wait with the thief. A, Someone yeah, thief. Be, oh, Lupin. Yeah, I, I, I Lupin. mean, it's probably not pronounced like that, but it's Lupin in French. Lupin, that's why I was yeah. saying, and Lupin, if you want to say in English, and yeah, Lupin. It's uh, it's about. Uh, have you seen it? No, I I have not. I just you don't know think what? I'll, I'll, that I'll shut it and I'll let you watch it. It's the best show. Right. If you like, it's really good. Lupin. Right. It's two seasons in, and uh, my favorite TV show is currently Peaky Blinders. Oh, I know that show. European, British show. I ought to know a couple of actors. Yeah. There. It's a comedy, right? Uh, Not it's completely, a, but... It's, is it no, funny? it's... I don't remember. Maybe I'm wrong. It's more of... Uh, they're a mob family, and then they... You see them progress from book, uh, bookies into drug traders, and then he, he starts dabbling in the British government, and then meets churchill it's set in 1921 1917 oh, uh, after the wor- first That's world cool. war so it's like um like it made um, i guess men hard and that kind of stuff and then it was a hard world he said oh it made me hard because i've seen the worst in the world life and, and it made him want more yeah it's a really good show it's about a family uh the shelby family and then how they take an, a, a small neighborhood and make it into an empire of theirs. And what about you? What's your favorite show? Uh, I want to actually. I think I've already said it. Degrassi has to be my favorite Degrassi. show. But yeah, I, it's hard for me to decide. Like I'll mention a couple more that I like. 
the Vampire Diaries, everyone thinks it's cringe. And, you know, I before I started watching it, I thought Vampire is cringe, romance cringe, because that's a big focus of it. But, but, but it's, it's another... Taste. Yeah, yeah, it's another high school show, and even after it progresses past high school. I mean, why would they make it if it's cringe and nobody exactly. likes it? It's some people like, like a, it. A lot of it, like I have it, I get some posts in my feed and all the com- in my Instagram feed, all the comments are these fangirls. That can get kind of annoying, but just I'm ignoring that. I like the show because yes, sometimes it has predictable plots because I yeah. think that's a lot of CW shows, but it's still it's still like CW does pretty well with relationships. I think that's one of the things that they deal well with at least even at least maybe on the non-action shows it's not as i mean on the mm-hmm. action shows it's not as well but for the non ones it's it, they deal with it pretty well i think that's cool to see because yeah. you know it's, it's the girl uh, who's you know fighting over two or who's getting fought over by two vampire brothers and eventually it's just one moves on and then you see them uh having relationships with other vampires and it's cool to see how humans are turned to vampires and how they deal with that and how they how their character changes. Oh, so they get yeah. bitten like this folk tale is all. Yeah, you it's get all the folk tales. You know, uh, this wooden stake to the heart uh, mm-hmm. kills them. There's werewolves too. There's witches. All that mythology. Are they scared of garlic? No, that's the main thing. Scared? Garlic does not do anything. That's the myth uh, over there. And uh, uh, it's like, what are the myths about you get vampires? The, and they're like, there's oh, werewolves are supposed to be weak to like nickel steel or something. I don't remember, but that's also a myth. Yeah. But, uh, that's interesting to see all these different show, mystical creatures. Yeah, in, in that, that show. show. And there's yeah. also a related show that the a spinoff, and I think that might be even better because it's like, well, the Vampire Diaries is about, I'd say, uh, you know, like romance, friends. This one is about mm-hmm. family, and like a family of vampires, like the first vampires. It's about yes. them. They're immortal. They've been living for like a thousand years. It's about, it's, it's just interesting because there's this one evil brother. There's this one uh brother that's trying to bring him back from the evil and there's a sister who's caught and they're trying to be get more freedom because their brothers her brothers are protected. Yeah. It's 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 crazy. It's a crazy show, but it's very interesting. And then one more. Uh there's this this is the one show that it, are two. This these are two shows that are mainly purely comedy, but I still like them even though don't necessarily like comedy that much. First one never have ever. And that it's because I'm Indian. It's a a show about an Indian girl and it has a lot of jokes about Indian stereotypes and all that, so I find that relatable mm. and very funny at the same time. So I think that's what's made me like it, and it's it's coming out with the season two. Excited to see that, but it deals with it's a teen show again, and I like teen shows. Yeah, the big part of it is the relationships. I think this is where like it's not it's not in my top ten because I I find it sometimes a bit cringe where I just get past this couple parts, but it, it's still a very good show that deals with. Just yeah. literally everyday problems that a high schooler might face. So that's going to be the end of the episode. I know the last segment was wrong, but it's a one-time thing. And TV shows are a big thing. We want to spend time delving into each one that we like. So, But, you know, if you enjoyed the episode, just as the regular, drop a like, subscribe, ring the notification notifications bell, tell your friends about the podcast. We really appreciate it. Just more awareness and everything. Drop a comment for any yay or nays, topics, discussion, things, anything in the news that you want us to talk about. And uh, this is Benjamin with Babblers, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.